So I stop the SSRIs, I let that metabolize, and now I'm on five milligrams methylene blue, and this is the shiznit. This is like the missing ingredient that I've been looking for for the last five years. Let's get started with methylene blue and SLUPP332 because I just introduced it uh, based on uh, Dr. Dean's um, raving about it. And I got to give you a standing ovation. This combination is, is fucking legendary. It's 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 nice. It's energetic. It's euphoric. Yeah, I and mean, I'm, I'm I'm coming off SSRIs, right? So I I couldn't combine fortioxetine with methylene blue. I got full blown serotonin syndrome for one day. It was horrible. So I stopped the SSRIs. I let that metabolize, and now I'm on five milligrams methylene blue. And this is the shiznit. This is like the missing ingredient that I've been looking for for the last five years. Yeah, um, it's, it's one of so those nice ones work. that you, I mean, it's hard to explain when you sort of optimize your, your brain chemistry that way. Like, I mean, we're now, uh, I'm probably quote unquote dieting now, probably 16 or 17 weeks. And my mm -hmm. body fat from what I've shared there photo wise is very, very low. And, um, I've had none of these sort of lethargy, whether that is physical or mental, get up in the morning, smash cardio. And I, I just put it down to that sort of like the whole mitochondria optimization with that oxygenation that the methylene blue brings. Yeah. The sort of like people have raised, it does inhibit MAO. So you, you do have to uh, bear that in mind. But for someone like me, we didn't talk about this in the last podcast. Um, mm -hmm. My genetics, I've got MAOA++. So mm -hmm. I've got uh, like a very fast MAOA enzyme. And that's how, when I looked into my genetics, why depression runs on my mother's side. So the methylene blue gives the, I guess, the upstand there against my own genetics on top of, you know, keeping on top of tryptophan intake and 5-HTP. But... The methylene blue, I mean, I, I wish I, you know, I wish I tried it sooner than uh, this year. So it's it's definitely one that I will continue to utilize, you know, and like what we, we caveated on two or three times per week, maybe max four. But it's not something that I believe you should be like taking every single day, you know, similar to any mm. new tropic or that you want to take breaks so that you you don't become more so psychologically dependent that you know, I have to take this every day. And so you, you observe the effect when you do take it. Right. I agree. I agree. So I might be very similar in your sense that I might be MOA, uh, Maui plus plus, but I never done a genetic analysis to determine that I've always taken five HTP and tryptophan and got a good result of that. And then, you know, last couple of years I've been experimenting with SSRIs to kind of see if that was a game changer, which the fluvoxamine was, but the vortioxetine, I will never run that again. That basically killed my libido to the point even ejaculation was uh, non-enjoyable. So I took that out. Um, and the methylene blue might actually then offer a solution for, you know, coming off SSRIs, because normally stopping the fluvoxamine or vortioxetine, you would get brain zaps, right, from the sudden drop in serotonin levels. But those are non-existent. I take it four or five times a week, five milligrams. Ten milligrams was a little bit of a too high dose for me on the methylene blue. Um, so I, I don't feel any withdrawal now, which is a warm welcome because the last time I came off fluvoxamine after running it for almost a year at 100 milligrams per day, I had the worst withdrawal ever. And I've tried a lot of drugs in my life uh, for longer periods of time. That was probably the worst withdrawal ever, even worse than PCT. Um, but nothing now. So five milligrams per day gets the job done four to five times a week. And um, did you guys ever try peak O2 as an intra-workout or pre-workout? It's um, a mushroom yeah, no. extract. The, yeah. So, so the peak O2, it kind of helps with oxygenation and making it easier to breathe as well. And this is basically like two grams, four grams of peak, uh, peak O2 times 10. Yeah, it's... because the oxygenation and the breathing, I think if you combine this with a nasal strip where you kind of open up your nostrils, yeah, it's just, it's, it's amazing. I, I found like in the morning time when I take and then obviously go off to cardio, you know, like your, your, your cardio efficiency is so much improved. And then obviously 
the other thing I guess is when you have that improved oxygenation is your mitochondria are a lot more efficient but then there's a lot more potential for oxidative stress so you know it, yeah. it comes back mm. to again making sure that as you're utilizing that oxygen you're able to clean up the byproducts of what the mitochondria are doing hmm. yeah now I think my antioxidant profile is very very good but my vitamin C and glutathione and NAC and glycine that I take, you know, all, all these things I do at the same time. So I didn't notice any increase in oxidative damage after adding in the um, the methylene blue and then later on the SLUPP332. I do know that this combination regarding energy levels, but also body temperature um, did increase a bit. Like I'm a little bit more clammy, more sweaty now. But energy levels, it's, it's an absolutely phenomenal stack. And the methylene blue is reasonably inexpensive. And the SLU, of course, is a little bit more pricey because it's a new compound in the market. There's maybe two or three sources that have it. And even though we all offer discount codes for those sources, um, it still adds up. Mm. Um, so you wanted to run the SLU to 700 micrograms per day? Yeah, Did I hear that correctly? Uh, yeah, either, either six or seven. I, I, mm -hmm. I, we, we had it consistently at four. And then I took it out uh, when we went on vacation. So again, I wanted to just make sure that the, the sort of bias of taking it for whatever it was, 12, 14 weeks continuously, take it out. And then went back in this week at four. We've a couple of weeks probably to the next show that I'm planning to do. So there's probably a tiny bit more fat to come off if I want to be really, really critical. Um, uh, I've just been in Morgan's clinic there before the podcast because my big toe and my little toe had pins and needles because there's literally no fat now in my toes where the nerve is rubbing. Yeah. So she was looking at my feet for me. Um, I want to see maybe what six or 700 does for the, the last little bit. I don't think there's going to be any difference. I think 400 to me is probably the sweet spot based on, you know, that the animal dosage equivalent in humans works at like four milligrams per day so when you're at 400 micrograms you're you know sitting way below that four milligram top dose um, well so so i did the conversion from the animal models right it, it varies between 25 milligrams once per day to 50 milligrams twice per day but it's all through intraperitoneal injection so that's basically Correct. into the abdomen but this is per kilogram so if you convert this from 50 milligrams twice per day to humans, I think it's four milligrams per kilogram. Correct. So that would mean that you have 400 milligrams for a 100 kilogram bodybuilder. Um, and, and our dosing protocol is like literally a thousandth of that at 400 micrograms. Mm. And that so, was considered the top end dose of what was effective? What you guys yeah, and they say that it's reasonably benign. So liver enzymes, lipids, most of it, it, it seems to be unaffected. And they had um, an insulin resistance study. I, I already prepared for a deep dive, so I'll release that. I think over the next couple of days, I'll start recording that based on the seven studies that, <laughs> that Dean sent me and I was able to find. So there's that much there. Um, but it seems to prevent um, insulin resistance or, or improve insulin sensitivity in, in obese model states where they get like a 60% high fat diet. Um, and then the rest is carbs and protein. So it prevents fat gain, improves glucose homeostasis and glucose metabolism. And then in a normal state, um, it really improves fat metabolism to the point it, it helps with body composition. So fat mass goes down. It, it's weird in the studies they say, you know, in the, in the rodent studies, they keep the mice in a thermo neutral environment. And then they say that there's no change in body temperature, but I noticed at least a combination of methylene blue and SLUPP332 is that body temperature and climbiness and it, it does go up a little bit. So there's clear mitochondrial efficiency and energy expenditure going up. Um, and then you combine it with Mirobic Ron and whatever else I'm on. Mm -hmm. So I would tell people to proceed with a little bit of caution. If you train in a gym without air conditioning, um, drink a lot of water because I'm sweaty as shit. And that's why I understand why Dean was having a hard time in Dubai. <laughs> yeah, because he was it, on this stack or just coming off the uh, pit. I I, I was know? still doing it when we were in Dubai. I was still taking it. So the only time I took a break was those two weeks in uh, Lanzarote when we went on vacation there. And I'm sort of glad we did because when we were over there, it was like 31, 32 degrees every day, so it was quite warm. Um, that you know that in itself, like I was sort of saying before the 
the we went live the holiday sort of confirmed me about uh, how sensitive your body can be towards like food allergies if you want to put it that way um with how my weight shot up like 16 pound on holiday with no change other than adding in a uh, milk protein puddings when i ran out of a uh, plant-based protein oh, what and, i think is if if you kept the slupp 332 in you probably wouldn't have gained so much and i think this is the reason why you improved your body composition in dubai even though you had a free meal every day because it seems to prevent fat gain mm -hmm. while you're eating a little bit off plan or at least from the animal models so i will surely run slupp 332 at the mr olympia eat whatever the fuck I want, mm. and then see how my body composition is afterwards. Because, uh, right? I mean, if it's reasonably benign based on the limited scientific evidence we have, and you can just, you know, go off plan for a week or two and not gain anything, then at least you don't have this overcompensatory period where you, you know, need to get lean again, mm -hmm. need to do a fast, need to blah, 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 you know? Um, so I, I think it's quite beneficial in that aspect also. What's the mechanism that it's preventing fat gain? Do we know? It's, so it increases mitochondrial biogenesis, okay. it improves fatty acid oxidation, okay. improves insulin sensitivity and glucose metabolism. Apparently it shifts uh, muscle fiber type to type 2A, even though that's mostly okay. related to glucose. Mm -hmm. um, like with cardarine, for example, I think it shifts it to type 1, that's mostly fatty mm -hmm. acid oxidation. So in, in this one study, they mentioned that it shifts to uh, type 2A muscle fibers, which improves uh, glucose metabolism. But then through mitochondrial biogenesis, fatty acid oxidation goes up. Um, so it, it seems to just basically be l literally an exercise mimetic, like okay. cardarine is. Interesting. Um, and, and metformin used to be. 